Welcome back. I'm the Intense MD, a double board certified intensivist, here to give you an inside look into the intensive care unit. February is heart month, so all of the videos this month will be about heart disease and heart health. We did start a little early with the last video in January about atrial fibrillation, and you can watch it right here. Today, we're going to take a broader view and talk about the different types of heart diseases because there are several categories of heart disease. The first is coronary artery disease, and this is what many people think about when they think about heart disease because this is when the arteries that give blood flow to the heart, because if you think about it, every organ system in our body needs blood, oxygen, nutrients, including the heart. So the heart has its own vasculature that supplies the oxygen and nutrients to the heart tissue. When these arteries become blocked or have stenosis, that means narrowing and obstruction of flow, then somebody can have coronary artery disease. Coronary artery disease can lead to a heart attack. This is when the vessels or one of the critical vessels becomes obstructed enough or blocked to a point where the portion of the heart is not getting enough blood, oxygen, and nutrients leading to ischemia. This is a lack of blood flow to a certain area that leads to tissue damage. So some symptoms of coronary artery disease can be chest pain or angina. Of course, with heart attack, we'll talk about heart attack in a later video this month and do a much deeper dive, but classic symptoms are chest heaviness, chest pressure, trouble breathing, radiating pain. That means the pain feels like it's moving up into the shoulder, down the arm, up to the jaw. And there are also some atypical symptoms of heart attack, which we'll talk about in a later video. And again, complications of coronary artery disease are heart attack or also heart failure. So obviously, the next heart disease is heart failure. This is when a portion of the heart tissue, the heart muscle, is damaged or weakened and cannot pump effectively anymore. This is another topic that I will do a deeper dive on at a later time. But if you think about it, the heart is two pumps, the right side and the left side. And we look at if the pump is working at a normal capacity, mildly decreased, moderately decreased, or severely decreased. There are a number of things that can cause heart failure, but like I said, heart attack is one of them. Also have cardiomyopathy, which is a disease process that involves the heart muscle itself. And there are numerous causes of cardiomyopathy. But broadly speaking, they can be in two categories, ischemic cardiomyopathy from coronary artery disease or non-ischemic cardiomyopathy from something else affecting the heart muscle. Arrhythmias are another type of heart disease. And I had talked about atrial fibrillation last week in my prior video. This is one type of arrhythmia. An arrhythmia is when the heart electrical activity is abnormal. There are many different types of arrhythmias, and you can have an abnormality where your heart beats too fast. You can have an abnormality where your heart beats too slow. Many times, arrhythmias also have an abnormal pattern to the heartbeat instead of a regular rhythm. There is a set electrical pathway in the heart through which the impulses travel. So if there's any breakdown in this process, and that can be affected by things such as cardiomyopathy, coronary artery disease, or any structural damage to the electrical pathway, then somebody may have an arrhythmia. You can tell the location of the breakdown in the pathway based on the electrical activity in the heart, whether it's seen on EKG or continuous telemetry in an ICU setting. Another broad category of heart disease are congenital heart diseases. This is when somebody is born with an anatomic abnormality in the heart. There are many types of congenital heart disease, but some of the more common ones are an atrial septal defect, ASD. This is a hole in the heart between the left and right atria, allowing blood to pass through from one side of the heart to the other. There's also transposition of the great vessels 
when the aorta and the pulmonary trunk are flipped and they're going toward the wrong circulation. There's also a constellation of defects called Tetralogy of Fallot. And these are four separate defects in the heart that are associated with this disease process. Many times these days, these conditions can be diagnosed in utero. So when the baby is born, then they might have planned for cardiac surgery within the first few days following birth. Even after congenital heart disease repair, these patients can continue to have heart problems and sometimes it follows them into adulthood. So we will see patients as adults who have congenital heart disease, heart failure. Sometimes people need a, another cardiac surgery as an adult or even get considered for a heart transplant. Valvular heart disease is heart disease that affects the valves within the heart. The valves are between the chambers of the heart as well as the outflow tract. So there are four valves in the heart. These help control the direction of blood flow in and out of the heart. There are two main issues that can happen to a valve. Either it can become stenotic, that means the pathway out of the heart is narrowed. So instead of a valve opening all the way, it might open partway and that can cause less blood flow out of that chamber of the heart. It can also cause increased pressure in that chamber of the heart due to more blood than typical in that part of the heart. There is also a condition called valve regurgitation, and that is when one or more leaflets of the heart do not operate properly, and it can cause backflow into the chamber of the heart where the blood was exiting. It can cause, again, a disruption of blood flow. Many times, valvular heart disease is treated surgically or by a minimally invasive procedure, depending on the patient, if they're a candidate for surgery, or if they qualify for a procedure called a TAVR. This is the most common type of minimally invasive valve procedure. A TAVR is when the aortic valve is replaced through a catheter instead of opening the chest, or someone may undergo open heart surgery with valve repair or valve replacement. And finally, aortic aneurysms are another type of heart disease. We've talked about this in prior videos. The aorta is a big blood vessel that takes blood from the heart and pushes it throughout the rest of the body. This large vessel can have bulging or weakening of the walls. Hypertension or high blood pressure is a very common cause of aneurysm or aortic issues. People who have connective tissue diseases are more likely to have aortic aneurysms. Somebody who is smoking is also at risk for abnormalities in their aorta. This is just a brief video to go over the different types of heart disease. Since we will be talking about heart disease for this entire month, if you want to hear about any of these diseases in particular, let me know in the comments below, but also keep an eye on this channel for the month of February and over on my Instagram page because we'll be talking about many of these categories of heart disease throughout the month. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more health content and learn more about the intensive care unit. And I will see you next Tuesday for the next video.